Well, hello, everybody. It is Isaac C. Singleton Jr., actor and voiceover artist, waiting for my friend Ace Dalagosa to get online. She has joined. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Well, hello there. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Oh, I love How are you that. Doing this that actually like, made my smile brighter. I appreciate that. I'm doing great. Doing great. I look less like a robot, that's honest. Yeah, you don't have blue and red and all these right? different colors shining on your face. Like, it's funny that I think about it. I said alien last week, right? One of my friends, uh, weird things about aliens have been happening the past two or three days. And Maybe I'll update you on that one. But till then, um, <laughs> for joining the live. And thank you so much, everyone, also for joining. Uh, it's really great to be back, and it's great to have a light on me. So here we are. But you look you are, different. I know my hair's shorter. <laughs> not blue, you're not red and green this week. Right? Like the oh aliens, the, <laughs> it was It was cool. I like the effect of the red, blue, green, purple lighting where I was, but you know, no, nothing like actual lighting to make things brighter. <laughs> yeah. Aww. You seem so bright and shitty. I'm like so happy to hear hear this from you too. I'm happy the time. I really am. I have a pretty darn good life. I've yeah. lived a pretty darn good life. See? Yeah, so Downs, but he, you know, well Where's enough. that guy from That's Finland? He should. <laughs> I'd be like, look, look, your your biggest fan is still back. <laughs> That's great. So you know, we usually start with the three thank yous. Do you want to carry on that tradition? Yeah. All right. Why not? Cool. Sounds good to me. Okay, let's do it. So, what are the three things that you're grateful for, Isaac? All right, so let me think. God, there's so many different things running through my mind right now. I'm trying to figure out which ones I pick. I had a great lunch meeting with somebody today. And I talked about things in the future. That was wonderful. And my workout are still going well and I keep my body in good shape so I can be ready for those action films whenever they pop up or anything else that maybe I need me to take my shirt off for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I also, um, I'm just thankful that my whole entire family is happy and healthy. That's great. That's can you, can you do the, the peck thing? Oh, you can. Yeah, okay. sure. Well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, if anyone else could, I can't do that. If, you, if anyone wants to remix this, please feel free to share that dance. You can do that. That I, I go right too. Ding, 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 ding. See, I, you know, it's like the guy dragging over there, <laughs> there to the right, and then walking. Like... <laughs> Dinner and a show, everyone. Dinner and a show. I hope, I hope the dinner stays down, though, while they're watching I mean, the after show, that, you know? I wouldn't be surprised if somebody <laughs>, laughs and it just flies out. I know, that's what I'm saying. I don't want anybody to go, oh, there's my, oh, I really like that, too. It was good. Oh, well. <laughs> uh -huh. It's enjoyable. After the live, I went up to Yamashiro Tuesday night. Jay Davis, who does a comedy show, comedy show up there, and he get some really good comedians. God, they see some good comedy last Tuesday. It was really good. Tiffany had up 
there. Finesse huh? Mitchell from SNL. He was up there so, last That's week. Awesome. Had a good time. So, right. who's somebody that you would love, like that you, you didn't expect to be? Not that you didn't expect him to be awesome, but you haven't seen before that really like kind of shine the light on comedy for you. Well, I remember I've not seen this man in person. But I was just cruising on my Netflix, and I saw a guy named Sebastian Maniscalco. I'm like, what the heck? I'll, I'll look at this guy and see what he's... He's turned out to be one of my favorite comedians of all time. He's really funny. He's really good. He's got a few specials up there now. He's also done some films, too. Did you see Green Book? And Mahash Ali was in it. He got an Oscar for it, as a matter of fact. Sebastian was in that movie too, so he can do some. He can do. He can do comedy and he can do drama also, because that was a dramatic part. Interesting. Okay. Movie. Okay. So Hollywood to you says Jake was great on Poor Gasset with Dane Cook. Okay. Yeah, Dane Cook is. I remember back when I first moved to LA, I would see Dane Cook before he was the Dane Cook we know now. Is like the guy you know. Every, everybody knows his name because there used to be a place called Dublin's up there on, on a. Sunset Boulevard. It's not even there anymore. The building's gone, everything. It was like a sports bar and bar, and then they had an upstairs venue, and you can go see live comedy there. That's where I saw, the first time I saw Ken Jung up there, too, back before he's gotten his name from doing the this is various movies he's done also. So he saw a lot of comedians up there on their way up. It's kind of neat to see them before their names were known. So that's the first oh, time I ever saw Dane Cook was up there. Okay, I love, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. So I've lived in LA and I've lived in New York City. And when I was an NBC page, you know, one of the duties as an NBC page, you actually work like the late night shows, SNL, The Tonight Show, you know, Seth Meyers, etc. Right. I want to say Dean Panero. He was one of my, my agent. He was my oh. voice original for a while there. He's a great guy. He's oh, well, saying hi back to him. Hi there. Aww. I'm happy to see you supporting. Thank you for joining. Um, yeah, it's like, it's really interesting just to see the comedy scene and seeing people before they start to make it. Like, for instance, I remember when, um, so I remember when this is a Filipino comedian, um, his name, do, do you know who I'm talking about? Joe Coy? Oh, I know. I feel like that is, really yeah. Filipino. Okay. Right now. I was like, well, what, how did that name not come to you? Anyways, so with him, I remember him back in the days when, like, I only knew two Filipino comedians who were doing well in digital. And now that they're blowing up, I'm just like, yes, great job, Joe Koi. It's actually really fun to see people grow. And then you have a better, you have a stronger loyalty to that. And I think that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, uh, I kind of want to circle back to Sebastian. What does Sebastian look like? So I, I remember. Um... All right. Well, the name Mike Maniscalco, he's an Italian guy. I've never stood next to him, but I'm assuming he's probably okay. between 5'8 and 5'10. Uh, he's got a, he's got, you know, he's, hair kind of close on the side and he's got hair on the top his face let me think of who you who i could try to say he looks similar to because it's hard to describe a person's face by saying he's got lips you know you can't i can't say i can't really say what well, uh, i mean his skin okay. is <laughs> olive like an italian guy would look and you know, he's but the thing that's so great about him is he's really funny and his facial expressions are really funny. He makes these great facial, facial expressions. He uses his voice where he like uh, exerts noises and stuff like that to, to get the point across. And he actually uses his whole body. Like if he's trying to, like, let's just say he's digging a ditch. He actually starts acting like he's digging a ditch, even though he's not digging one on stage, but he's just using his body to give you that whole thing. Like I'm shoveling snow, you know, that kind of thing. He's just really funny. He's talking about how his relationship with his parents growing up and, you know, that whole thing. And it's just really wow. funny. He's really great. He's good. Really good. Oh, that's I, wow, that's, that's some uh, praise, right? That's awesome to hear. 
I always feel like whenever I hear about comedians, I get different scopes. And it's nice to hear somebody say like, mm -hmm. this guy is doing really well and you get to see him live, which. I haven't seen him live yet. I've seen him on Netflix like that. I'd like to see him live. I was a matter of fact, I was at the comedy store mm -hmm. two weeks ago had been there that night, but we, my friend and I went to this other show first. She wanted to go see this other show. And she's like, Sebastian's mm -hmm. gonna be there tonight. I'm like, okay, let's go. And out there, his set was already over, so I missed it. So I didn't get a chance to see him live. I was really looking forward to it. We went to this other thing at first before I went there. But oh well, on forever. I'll see him again. I'll, I'll get a chance to see him in person again. Yay, okay, wow, there's a fan, I love that, that's great. Somebody who really appreciates another person's work, you know. It's awesome. Yeah. Do I have comedians? Other than I, oh, I should. Maybe I won't say that out loud. Uh, do, why isn't my top three? No, actually, he. Okay. Filipino guy, you're in the Filipino community. Yeah, You'd like to see a guy come up. Right. And just, I, I know he's a favorite comedian of all of my Filipino friends. Oh, I see. Okay. Being I get it. Um, so, uh, it, comedians, in my opinion, everyone has a favorite. My top three favorite comedians of all time is Joan Rivers. Because mm -hmm. I actually like, I, I okay. loved Joan Rivers. Like, I don't think it's like the weirdest thing to the extent of like my generation, right? Understanding that my generation sees Joan Rivers but doesn't really know about her more than Fashion Police. Yeah. I remember her because I thought it was always funny because she'd always extend her arms out and clap like this. You know, she would do that. And that was just funny. But, um, like, did you ever see, like, when you were a page in NBC, did you ever see her come oh on? Oh, my and gosh, my favorite, there yes. Night, Let's whatever. see, this is where it comes from. So what am I, all right. So Joan Rivers, love her. I love her to death. And I also, you know, Props to Melissa Rivers for being a little daughter. Yeah. Ah, so anyways, Joan Rivers was late to a taping of Fallon once. And I got to work the show, like actually get to see her. And the, um, just, oh, it was like a deleted scene essentially. But it was the funniest thing because I've never heard somebody so raw and so honest be so witty at the same time, just come out and say something that was pretty honest, but so freaking hilarious. Areas. And she was saying it in exasperation. So essentially, she came late to the show. Jimmy's like, John, John, you're late. Like, what, what's going on? What happened? She's like, I'm so sorry, Jimmy. Like, with the accent and everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you had, exactly. I'm, I'm so sorry, Jimmy. Jimmy. You know, if ugh, I was in this Mercedes limo, and the fact of the matter is, if the effing Germans knew how to make a freaking tank thing should have known how to make a freaking carburetor and i'm just sitting there dying trying not to fall over because it was so honest and so on the nose that i was just like i love you the carburetor, the carburetor yeah yeah, oh, yeah. i can't recite that joke like her it's just uh doing that would be a detriment and a disrespect to her name i love her that much that's how much i love john rivers um and another thing about her is like, she she went through so much and still like created like a legacy. Um, she's not just like a, a comedian, but she mentored some of the biggest comedians out there. Like Ali, she had a heart. Yeah, she had a heart for um, comedians that were either first born generation or immigrant generation because she came um, from that as well. So she came from from that background as well. Yeah, so like oh, Ali Wong yeah. and then um, on Fashion Police, uh, gosh, her name, uh, ah, it's escaping me. But she was one of the anchors on uh, on Fashion Police as well. She had one of those wonderful jokes about okay. her sexuality, <laughs> like most female comedians do. Uh, if anybody knows, please feel free to drop it in the comments and thank you very much. Um, not all 
Osborne. Thank you, Jen. Uh, it's a uh, I th uh, not Esther Kim. Um, oh God, I forgot her name. Um, I haven't seen her in a while, but it'll come. Hmm? Korean. Yes. Korean woman. There's only one that I can think of. I can't think of her name either. But I remember when I first saw her years ago. She, she used to, one of her favorite jokes was she'd say, "Yeah, I'm Korean. My parents don't have a store or anything." That was one of her jokes, and I thought that was funny when she'd say that because you know the stereotypical yeah, yeah. thing that goes on here. And the you know the funny thing about stereotypes is like, uh, all right, we'll talk about this. So unfortunately, those stereotypes, when they're propaganda or they're in the media of some sort. Like that actually causes some odd systemic racism, right? So it's like, wait, what are you doing here? I thought you normally work in this industry. Yeah, okay. Um, yes. Those jokes, like those jokes, essentially help create like that's funny, but it's not always true. So here I'm standing telling you how that's not true because I'm a comedian. <laughs> kind of situation. I love that. Mm -hmm. Um, but the other stereotypes suggest, you know, it. I don't know if it's rooted in racism, but a lot of times it's just a lot of times people in that community end up doing things similar to that or like that, you know. It's like people would think of me as they'd see me, oh, you play basketball. No, I'm six or five, but no, I don't play basketball, you know, or like I've run into several people. Sure, I've run into several women over the last few months. Who are, are Filipino descent? Who are nurses? So you know that's just people say, well, "Oh, is he a nurse?" But she's Filipino, not necessarily. But I know you might run into a lot of people who are Filipino who are nurses. So you know, I, I can understand why you say that gonna... kind of a deal. <laughs> Hold that thought, because it's true. My mother literally was like, "Hey, can you be? You should. You should go into nursing." Um, funny enough, so. I'm going to segue into this. I actually have my editor from my books coming to visit me from LA. Is it cool if I, he joins us, Isaac? No, I'm sorry. I, I don't like this. No, I'm just <laughs> I knew you'd do that. Life. By the way, this is Jordan Goldmeyer. Hello. Oh, I, I, hey, you know me money. I do. Where's that? <laughs> what do I owe you money for? I, I, that's that's just one of my jokes, man. Great time I, to cheat something I'm up. Just and I've been like, oh yeah, I forgot. I mean, you know, I I've got so much money out there that I've gotten from the years. I know him too. I'm just kidding. So he's an editor, sure. He has well, I'm, I think it was mainly for my books, um, which because we have a really great business partnership with somebody who knew how to write a pretty good. Like based off of what I was doing and ideas. Um, yeah. Other than that, he has a few published works. Mm -hmm. He also is. Hmm? Oh, I said congrats. Thanks to you. Yeah, it's, it's in. It's a completely different yeah. industry than what we are nor normally around, Isaac. So it's data uh, analysis and analytics, especially for Excel. Yes, but I've been writing forever, and I do other, like, I have, oh, should I jump in the middle? Yeah, right? yeah, please, please. Um, but I have done, like, uh, I've done, like, other work. Like, it's not just Excel and data. And then, you know, I met Ace uh, through a mutual friend, and um, she had an interesting book idea, and I just needed, I thought, do something different. And uh, actually, Ace, because I did that, because I gave her that editing a lot, like, I realized I was like good at it and a lot of other people have asked for it and I'm like doing it for like um for a big book now so well congrats yeah man. now this is going to be a published book that's going to be in the uh, on the internet or is this going to be a book that's going to be bought at Barnes and Noble and well like on Amazon, this book the book like I'm that. doing editing for now I should say it's for an author who I really uh like so basically he um it is a Barnes and Noble type book, but what he does is people like in the community, he does like an outreach, like for people to read it. And then you kind of go through a selection. Process. So it is free, but I'm reading this book before it comes out and I'm like giving feedback. So it's yeah. kind of, it's kind of nice. Like I've, I've not been in this position. I've done other editing for technical books, but nothing like this. Yeah, it's cool. Jordan was like, 
I remember when I was coming out uh, trying to create my first book and I needed um, some insight publishing world and he gave me so much great information knowledge and great support as well uh definitely a good coach and at the same time has like that he, I mean, there, there's more i can so keep nice. going like, you're being so nice like, well, I, you're making me you're embarrassing me on in front of oh uh, but, but it's so true i'm like <laughs> flattering the crap out of him but to be honest he did help me get out of a rut he helped me write two books another project that's about to come out and at the same time helped me figure out a bunch of things for online courses. So yeah, right, incredible knowledge base, definitely highly recommended. And at the same time, one of my good friends and colleagues. So I'm happy. To yeah, awesome. I'm happy to stop by because I've stopped by the lives before, but never like live live. Yeah, like he hasn't been in yeah. the same frame as me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How funny it would have been if I'd said, hey, he owes me money. <laughs> and I walk off screen. Grabbing him, that would have been crazy. By the neck and that would have been the funny. coolest edit ever. <laughs> We've done that. I feel like we remember when we did that. Um, oh, also, Jordan was one of our sponsors for that event in Vegas. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, Are we yeah, and, and it was funny. We were in two different rooms in Vegas, and like, so he could, as it could have done that. Yeah, yeah, that could be funny, but yeah. So. yeah. So uh, what were you two talking about before I so really interrupted? Systemic racism. And uh, uh, <laughs> as well. Stereotypes in comedy and sometimes it, it can, it, it has a basis in truth. Like I was talking about how people look at me and don't think, oh, did he play football or basketball? Because I'm tall and, and African-American. And then I was also saying how I've met a lot of women lately that are, uh, you know, they're Filipinos, but they're also nurses, you know, and it's not because there's any racism involved. It's just that they happen to be nurses. And a lot of people yeah. think of Filipinos and as a nurses. Story and behind they that. were nurses. So, like, during the, in the 80s, during, like, the, during uh, the wars, essentially. Um, 80s? During, in the war, 80s, what there wars was in still, the 80s? Like, um, there was still, like, a lot of issues in regards to, uh, I wouldn't say Cold War, but more communism and, like, there was a lot going on, essentially, and a lot of poverty-stricken um, areas, one of them being that, um, like, the Philippines was hit really hard in during those times. So there were agencies that guaranteed a Filipino, uh, an American visa if you were a nurse, and then they would send you overseas to either the East Coast or the West Coast. And these would employ Filipinos. Filipino nurses because there's a shortage of nurses in the United States. Hence, when you go to hospitals or whatnot, there's usually a Filipino nurse. Okay. There was a Please shortage. Of short nurses. Oh. <laughs> I didn't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. I, I, I own and love my height. Five two next to Isaac is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so going on with that, I was like, Jordan, we were talking about being Jewish. Mm -hmm. And I can't talk about being Jewish because I'm not. How do you feel about this subject? Mm -hmm. Do you think this is something you can... I mean, I don't know if I can say on live the things I say in private, but... <laughs> That's fine. That's um, fine. I would say that, like, you know, I've been thinking a lot about, like, my generation's past, and I found out that my grandfather became a pharmacist because like after World War II, many Jews like like find a job that they, they can do that they can grow, have a business because at that point a lot of people weren't always hiring Jewish people. So they got into like gray drug was like kind of like targeting that market. And so I think it's not unrealistic that communities like form around like work. I mean, I think that that's like something that happens. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, you know, what is and isn't racist is like, very hard to like for me to really like it's uh, it's yeah. just like I, I, like I guess we could like tease that out all night but it does feel i guess at the end of the day um it i don't know if you don't find it racist <laughs> and you don't find it racist then uh, that's it that's, i don't know you guys seem to be cool with it i so we've talked about the subject a lot and i i think what's interesting is like i remember explaining how that event that i that i helped Create mm -hmm. in in Washington D.C. That was to build dialogue in regards to systemic racism, 
in Hollywood and also um, to contribute to the Stop Asian Hate Movement. So with that being said, racism, I feel like it's not, it's a very touchy subject. It's very controversial. Let's put it that way. And a lot of people don't know what the line is. And to be fair, what I believe and you believe, what is right, right? Like still dignifying, respecting people. There's like small things here and there when it comes to those tiny things. But when it becomes abusive, that's when it's like, uh, nah, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Um, when it comes to like speaking of it in a, in a light where it's relatable and we can like be unified in that adversity, which to be fair, Joe Coy does really well. I'm giving you some props here. He does that very well. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really understandable that if you're coming from a specific cultural background and you can own that background and then also relate it to others in a way to bring people together, phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, I, what, what bothers me is whenever it's trying to be used to uh, separate yes. and down and degrade others. That's what I don't like. About it. You know, because that's what a lot of times it is, trying to separate you and degrade you. Unfortunately, a lot of times, especially I lived in the South. I lived in Texas. I lived in Florida. I lived in Tennessee. And a lot of those people down there, when it came to race relations, to who who seemed like they wished they could relive the Civil War, some of them felt, I felt like. I mean, I remember one of my teachers when I was in high school, when I was in Texas, would refer to the Civil War as the War of the Northern Aggression. Anyway, um, yeah, I know. But, you know, a lot of people, they, it's, it's human beings. I think human beings yeah, just want to feel sure. like they're better than somebody. It's a normal somebody. tendency, yeah. If there's a group that they can just look at and say, okay, we're better than they are, at least and use that to make them feel better than someone else. And that's the sad part about it, because a lot of times they don't like to see people who they know, in essence, are better than they are, but they try to figure out how to degrade them anyway, because know what to say or do. I mean, I remember there's a line that Gene Hackman says in the movie Mississippi Burning. We tell him this story about when he was a kid and his dad was a farmer, and then down the street from them was his other farmer. This farmer was a black man. And the black man really did well with his farm, always was, you know, really put in good crops. And the farmer went and got this black guy, got a mule, and the mule even helped him even become a better farmer. And his all his buddies were always joking at Gene Hackman's father saying, man, that close thief is down the street. He's doing way better than you are as far as farming is concerned. So anyway, one day the mule ended up poisoned and dead. And he looked at his dad. He could tell him he looked in his dad's eye that his dad is the one to kill the mule because he just got tired of that guy being better than he was as far as farming was concerned. And his dad turned to him and said, son, if you're better than a N word, then who are you better than? So that's a lot of times I think a lot of that's a lot of that's down there in the South. These people just feel like, man, I mean, sure, they hate to see the fact that uh, black people are one fifth the population in the United States. But so much of our culture drives pop culture and even sports and uh, music and now politics, all kinds of stuff. They just can't stand it because they don't feel like, how, how can these people who were downtrodden still be able to rise up above? And they're only one fifth of our country. How is this possible? It's, it's a weird some mindset. It really does. And to be, so I knew somebody recently who actually, he was basic, and this is in LA. This isn't like, in the South, some guy, for whatever reason, hounded him down saying, I hate N-words, like literally until, like for an entire block. And it was really terrifying and he was alone. And I was just like, uh, and for, for, for that reason, we actually talked about it. Cause like, oh shoot, like, are you okay? Is everything all right? And I remember asking him these questions and he was like, I think the guy really was just mad that I was doing well, better than he was. Um, and doing better doesn't mean you are better, <laughs> just just to be clear. But like no. the fact that that was the reason why, pure jealousy and envy. I'm but we all oh, yeah, we, we, be full of I mean, we experience that every day. Like, but what I find to be the most respectable actions that have ever been taken is if people don't 
act that way. They don't fall into that tendency of being jealous. That they just focus on their grinding being better than who they were the day before. You do that, all the other crap, all of that, usually like, you don't see, see as much of it. I could say that for sure. It's happened to me a bunch. Don't get me wrong. A lot of people try to tear anyone down based off of like how people are doing or how they're performing. Jealousy is a normal human thing. But it's really, yeah. I really appreciate it when people always take the high road. And for example, Isaac, you do. And that's why we work together. Same thing with Jordan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't understand. But, you know, we live in a city where it's full of, I mean, let's think of it. We got it. We've got this pool of people out here who are trying to get their dreams to come true, whether they're doing music or film or whatever. And there's always been that di di dichotomy of the haves and the have-nots. I mean, that's definitely this what you're going to see. And when you see the haves and all the things that do have, for me, this motivates me to work harder and get things going and just enjoy the life I'm living. But for some others, man, it makes them very bitter and angry, and they want to figure out, well, they want to, unfortunately, they go to a place of darkness where, like, they don't deserve it. They're not this. They're not that and all that kind of stuff. And that's where... Yeah. I think the problems come yeah. in. I think we're you know. talking about this. Like, people have more self love. For sure. <laughs> that was such a hippie way of me going about it, but it's real. Like, if, if people understood, if you, if, if people raise their standards of how to treat themselves, maybe you wouldn't be as bad around others. Yeah, maybe so. I just look at human beings and how. Our even our whole past is going to be. I'm talking centuries ago. I'm reading a book called Oh, you're reading uh, Forty Eight Laws of no! Power. I'm, I'm reading one of his other books right now. I read I read two of his books. <laughs> I'm reading, listening to these stories, no. and it's just full oh, no, of look, jealousy look, and people. Who I'm going to grab my book. Other, yeah. You know, oh, I'm coming in. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to grab tagged book. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah man, on. that's a crazy book. Um, uh, he's, he's got this other book, The Laws of Human Nature, and like combine those two together, and it's just like mind blowing. I'm still, I'm still thinking about. It, but this is this is the original. This was like this a big is, one. I read every because I read a book. I read, I've been reading. I've been reading something every single day for my acting class for the past four years mm -hmm. now, at least if not longer hours we have in, my, in one of my acting classes where you read at least 15 minutes of something every day that's non-fiction you know so that, that can be helpful to your life or whatever so i'm reading that right now and read some of these stories and they're like napoleon and like there's a the story i just got finished reading a story about a a chinese empress or really what she was was she yes. was a concubine in the beginning but worked to becoming uh one of the favorites and then she became like the top one, and then she became like some kind of emperor. But then, she, to keep all her power, she killed the she killed her own child, and blamed it on the other empress and said she did it. Yeah, and then right. that girl got exiled or killed. She uh, she killed the child that should have been the emperor, killed him off, and killed a bunch of people so she could stay in power. I'm like. That's what human beings, but that's, so exactly, me, that's what human me, beings tend to be. Sorry, I gotta, I gotta share this. So this used to be my Bible when I was 19. Okay. Do you know how much programming okay. I've had to do to make, to like literally transform all the blackness in my heart so much <laughs> from this book? Like I, to this day, and I'm going to be bluntly honest and I own this. After reading this, I remember somebody was like, you'll like this book. It seems like, you know, up your alley. I didn't know why. Then I read it. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. And the tactics work. Perform the tactics. You kind mm -hmm. of slowly and like sinisterly like transform your heart into this black hole. And it's not, <laughs> I, and I would know this, just, just saying, it took me a while to be like, wait, hold on. There's a different way about doing things that don't believe that there's only a 2% chance of finding love in this world. Like, just to be honest, and that was my, 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 I'm going to 
Yeah. It was, no, no, Thank I'm you. good. I'm really good. good. I enjoyed this. Thank you so much for having me. Maybe I'll we jump on oh, again. But yeah. I'm gonna head, I'm gonna step out. By the way, the exit. This is his book. In fine in fine bookstores everywhere. This one actually is in Barnes and Noble. This is the one I wrote with my book. Is it? Yeah. So. Yeah. Backwards. Being, but what the heck? Data head, becoming a data head. And then thankfully, Jordan, you know, okay. was uh, happy that you jumped in. So, yeah. Nice to meet you, Jordan. He'll, he'll send it back. Okay. So, so, but... Yes. I'm reading the book, not saying, okay, these are the kind of things I'm going to, I'm going to employ in my life, but I do see that those tactics and a lot of people that I have met and know. Yeah, and they, the they do work. Um, to be fair, if I'm glad I read the book because now I can see when people are in those lo lower vibrational tactics and then know and, and yeah. move on and have more of a high, higher integrity than positionally trying to, because what I see about it is it really is based off of a play of arrogance. Like you're positioning yourself to either be less than or above somebody. And to be honest, that viewpoint, it, if you really want to feel like a whole human being, scratch that out of your mindset. Seriously. Yeah. No one deserves to be felt like they're below somebody else. I, I yeah, I mean, I keep thinking. I think it was Louis the Fourteenth. There was there was one where I think, I think it was Fourteenth. I'm not sure which Louis. It was one of the French, and uh, this guy mm -hmm. was one of the ministers in his cabinet. He well, and he wanted to get this new position that he knew that other people were up for. So he threw this extravagant party and invited the king and all the different people and. It was a great party, and he as as and while he was why the king was there, he was exalting the king constantly, just playing praise on the king, pretty much trying to butter the king up, hoping that he can get this higher position in the cabinet that he wanted to get. And it backfired on him after the party was over. The king, in essence, was embarrassed that he had never thrown a party that lavish before, even though he was a guest of honor. So the king had him thrown in jail for 20 years and trumped up a charge saying that he must have stolen the money to be able to throw such an extravagant party. I'm like, come on, man. You, you're jealous of this guy? He's just trying to exalt you and try to get a better job. And you can throw him in jail for 20 years because he threw a better party than you used to throw throwing? I mean, come on. Well, you, but, you know what? It's interesting because I'm not trying to say that it's naive to think these things don't happen. I think it's very, very yeah. important to realize and accept that they do. And then therefore a bunch of like, like there's a, there's a, there's a few um, systems that have been put in place based on the good nature of people without negative parts. And then mm. that in people will wonder why there's corruption within a system, right? So, so if you're able yeah. to understand that human nature is human nature, both good and bad, then you can account for both uh, both behaviors and then also at the same time create great organizational infrastructures that help direct people into a better direction. And I think that's important. Yeah, yeah that is true. But I mean, I don't want to sound negative, but I just feel like from the experiences I've seen and, and, and observed from childhood to adulthood, adulthood, I don't know. I mean, are humans inherently negative this is on the negative side of things and they try to make themselves positive? Because, I mean, even as a baby, you can see like a baby and a baby and like one baby might grab a toy and the other baby wants to hit the baby. The other baby that took the toy. No wow. one taught them this, but they uh, do it. Right. I want to talk so, to, I actually talked to, to Jordan about this too. <laughs> um, when I say this is because like, I'm not song Dirty Laundry back in the day. Maybe you don't know. Kick them up, kick them when they're down. It's a song called Dirty Laundry. Anyway, it's like, like even when you're driving down the freeway and you see an accident, you, you kind of slow down and be like, oh, 
I'm glad that's not me, but oh, whoa, whoa, look at that. You know, it's like every, human beings just tend to see that and want to look at that kind of stuff. That's just, I don't know, is that just inherent in us? Is that what we are? And we actually have to fight to be good? <laughs> I honestly, that, that's a great question. And I can't answer that for all of mankind. Yeah, from my from my know, perspective, but... I actually do believe that there's good there's good and evil in everyone, right? It's what you choose to. Mm -hmm. It's what you choose within you to win, right? So if you choose to like continue to uh, nurture the goods, the good parts of you, but you do that like want to be generous, want to be helpful, and then you continually nourish that part of you that will exhibit in your behavior, right? If you feel called mm -hmm. to go yeah. the other route and you don't, and like it's, it's all come down, it all comes down to like how much have you really worked on yourself to see where your weaknesses are and when you slip into those behaviors versus when you've created such a strong inner fortitude that you continue to choose the higher vibrational routes. I think that's when that's when one happens, one the other happens. I honestly believe we have both. And we should acknowledge that. And it's okay. There's no shame in that. There's no guilt. You shouldn't beat yourself up for making mistakes or having tendencies. I think you can definitely acknowledge it, let it go when it comes with those negative behaviors. That's true. I mean, and that's how I try to live my life. That's how I try, yeah. my life daily, try to live my life daily, I'm trying to like constantly. But I just look around and I see so many people who want to go the opposite direction. I feel like I'm in the minority everywhere I go as far as trying to lift people up and be light in the world. I don't know. I'm not trying to say that I'm a beacon of light, but I just know that that's what I try to gravitate towards. But there's so much people here who just seem like they just want to not see people happy, not see people succeed unless they're succeeding. You know, it's always some kind of, some kind of, there's always some kind of a tit for tat thing where if, if they're not doing well, then they shouldn't be doing well either. You know, that kind of a feeling, it seems like, you know, and I don't know. It's just, I know. It's I know. weird. I don't know. I mean, this, there, was, there was like a proverb we're talking about like there's two monsters inside your body, one that's you know, trying to go towards the light and all that kind of stuff. And then there's the other one that's evil and wants to constantly tear things down. And only one can win in the end. And the question is, who wins? And it's the one you feed. Yeah. So I try to feed the good side always. Yeah. And that's it's, I... it's essentially understanding what, what is your foundation? What is your belief system? What do you really. So when people are trying to, you know, the like being that beacon of light, Isaac, you're my beacon of light. Okay. Yeah. Very much. How much more? Yeah, you're a beacon of light for others, whether you see it or not, Star. <laughs> but yes. I'm thankful. I, I truly am thankful for the life that I've lived so far. And God has given me a lot of blessings yeah. for sure. I definitely believe in God. And uh and I'm not I'm not afraid to share to tell people that 100%. either. And I'm a Buddhist. So mm -hmm. yeah, respectfully understanding yes. that. We always like Unifying part of all of this is like respect and dignity for human beings. I believe like both you and I share that. We really believe people should be treated with like the utmost respect. Um, and don't get me wrong, when we see these things, these negative instances, at least we're not blind to it. Um, that's a good thing. And then we can always see that as inspiration to do better. I guess my thing is I, I'm too busy thinking about how can we help the other ones who want the darkness. Show them that the not want to do the darkness. It's not want to be dark. I'm not, I not my, want to hurt others. The reason why yeah. they keep doing it is because they saw that it worked. So uh, if you if you can show yeah. people. That's not the only way it can work. Mm -hmm. I guess it's not always the easy, easy way, way, especially 
if like a lot of people are doing it, then you have to fight against a norm. And usually you get a lash back at that. But if you stay firm in what you believe in, that lash, yeah, it's like a short term thing. And then people will see it and people admire it and then they follow. Um, I'm not, not just speaking out of my ass here. This is like, like what I witnessed. <laughs> just to be very clear and fair, like as I'm saying this out loud, I'm like, this isn't just stuff I'm making up in my head. Like I've seen people who have been tested really hard right in front of my face. And the moment they took the high road, I went, you can do that. I'm going to do that. And mm -hmm. that's what I believe is really important. Like, I'm not just saying preaching. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm just saying from experience sharing that this is more, the more hopeful route for people. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I do. When you about talking out your butt, it made me think of Jim Carrey back in the day when he used to do a stand up, he'd bend over and grab his butt cheeks and say, let me ask you oh something. Do you remember when he did that? <laughs> yes. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That made me I'm back to comedians I'm again, but you know. Or we yeah, start and we can circle old. back. Comedians are great. I love comedians. One of my twins, air quotes, she's not really a twin, but not a biological twin. You know, Sarah Fatimi, we've seen her. Yeah. Yeah, she's yeah, doing we were, incredibly she was in Vegas well. And I love her stand-up and I love her comedy because it's so smart. I haven't seen her. I haven't seen her perform in a while. I'm ready to see it again. She's still or doing is, like, is she, like, I'll ask her. Um, she's been doing a lot. She's... She's been, uh, let's see, the thing about her, too, also because of the Iranian war, she is Iranian, so she's been doing a lot of, a lot of awareness, been very proactive in the social media awareness. She also did a charity, uh, not charity, she also did a, um, like, a community, Iranian community uh, comedy show, yeah, in Hollywood, and then the oh she did well the tickets went to contributions and the efforts for people in Iran, especially for the women yeah so she's out there she's doing really well um happy to like as soon as she sends me some tickets i'll tell her that we'll go yeah uh, oh, oh, that's oh, great so, that was a fun talk i feel like we don't get we haven't we haven't done that in a while this is good On way over our half an hey, hour mark that's good, for sure conversation. Well, well. do you yeah thank you do you have anything to add or any thoughts that you want people to take away for the week you know what but bobby mcferrin said it perfectly in the song don't worry be happy and just try to be happy that's what i try to do and you know what's right you know what's wrong just go for the right and then just try to live your life where people see you as a light. Yeah. Make people happy. Or do your best. You know? I feel like happiness doesn't just yeah. go without. It also comes from within. Yeah. yeah. Um, it does. You know, it's interesting. Uh, before we tailor off, I actually went to a results coaching class today. And we were talking about the different things or the negative, subtle obstacles that hit you when you're progressing in your career in your life and you're you know moving forward and being happy isn't always easy sometimes it's doing something different than the norm to get you out of the rut it's also acknowledging what's getting in your way and doing the small step to get over that fear and i really want to share that with people because i feel like if you continue you to let something daunt you from taking action, it'll get in the way of your, your happiness. Yeah, so small step at yeah, a time, that's especially true. after the pandemic, or we're still in it, I guess. The, <laughs> the thing to really acknowledge is everyone's going through a rut. It's not just me, I've met a lot of people going through a bunch of different ruts. And it's so important, just a small. Thing that's different even if it means trying a different dip or meal 
that day from your favorite restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like that affirmation. Thank you for the support. <laughs> Other than that, thank you everybody for joining. Uh, it was so great to be here. Thank you, Isaac. I appreciate you. Have a great week. Peace. Bye. You too. Goodbye, everybody. And thank you very much for joining us in. Mm -hmm.